What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to a very highly requested video. Today we're gonna to be talking all about stocks, options, and some huge profits that we've been making in the stock market. You guys join me today at the JR Hangar. It's the first time I've ever filmed in this location, hence why the lighting is not perfect. I know I'm not perfectly lit. I know the audio is a little echo. So I'm gonna try to talk directly at the camera to avoid some of that. It's a really big space. So much has happened in the past few months in addition to this massive hangar space that now holds our plane right there. If you didn't know, we, we picked up a plane. That's very exciting. And in the car side of things, we've picked up some really cool cars lately. I don't know, so much is going on. Check out JR Garage. We just revealed a, a really nice Rolls Royce that we picked up for a steal of a deal. We'll probably be able to make 15 or 20 grand on the car after using it and enjoying it. See, that's, that's, that's the purpose with all the cars. Everything has a profit written on it, so that's great. And speaking of profit, we have been making a lot of it in the stock market in the past month, two months, and even in the past week. There's been some crazy things going on. The, the stock market has been nuts. Really, ever since COVID began, it has been absolutely wild. The volatility, ups, downs, lefts, rights, it's crazy. We haven't been like day and night watching it until like the past month or so. Ever since Tesla started going absolutely bananas, we kind of had to pay more attention because we realized, oh boy, we now have a lot of money in Tesla. For a while there, our average share price in Tesla was like $193 per share, pre-split, pre-split, okay? That is very, very good. The fact that we haven't sold out over the years is, is a good thing, and that's our whole mindset going into that stock. We were gonna hold it for a very long time for many, 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 many years to come. Long-term capital gains, holding it until Tesla becomes maybe one day a trillion dollar company. I don't know, that's way down the line, but we have multiple Teslas, we have multiple Teslas on order. We're big fans, obviously, so we like the stock and uh, we've been supporting them for years and that's really paid off with this whole craze. Of course, you guys have seen the news, Tesla got up to over $500 a share post-split. So that's equivalent to you know over $2,500 pre-split. In my brother's Robinhood, which we've been adding a lot of Tesla shares to, uh, we, we currently have 100 shares in there. That number's a little, all right, jet taking off. One downside of filming at an airport, you get Gulf Streams taking off. So as you can see there, average cost of $90 per share. And like I said, that has risen over the past couple months because we've been adding to our position. So multiply that out, we're in about $9,000. And uh, that at the current Tesla price, which has gone up significantly today from its huge fall, is about $37,455, which makes for a $28,400 gain. That's crazy. And that's just on Robinhood. We have some on Weeble and then we have some on a TD Ameritrade account. It's well over 100 shares. So that alone, we've been making a killing on. Of course, other stocks have been doing great as well. Some of our Google shares and a couple of our stocks that we uh, strategically sold out of while they were at a really high peak. And then we had this money laying around. So what are we gonna do with this extra money that's just cash buying power? Well, you gotta do what all the cool kids are doing these days. And that is buying options. Oh boy, here we go. Let me just start out by saying options disclaimer. Options are incredibly risky. You can lose all of your money very easily. Many options trades do end up with people losing 100% of their position because that's how options work. If you're not in the money by the time of expiration, you lose everything you put in that to that contract if you take it out till that date. So very risky. Let me throw that out there. If you're just beginning, probably not the best idea. None of this is financial advice. These are solely my opinions, so invest at your own risk. This is extra money that we had, we were willing to put on the line, and so far, it's doing pretty good. Now, what are options? I'm sure you guys are wondering if you don't know already. There are tons of good tutorial, catch you up to speed on options trading videos out there. I would, I would highly suggest watching them. There's a lot of good teachers out there. Basically, I see options as a very powerful tool if you know or have a very good idea idea or feeling that a stock is going to move in a certain direction in a shorter period of time. That's what I believe options are for in my book. You know, it's something that I think this stock is going to do something in the next few days, the next week, the next month, the next few months is the furthest out options I do, but you can do them for years. So now what do they do? If you've been around the block just a little bit, you've probably heard calls and puts being thrown around with options. If you think a stock is going up, you have a good feeling it's going up, you're gonna to want to get a call. If you think it's gonna be going down, you wanna get a put. So those are the directions. You gotta first figure out 
what direction you think the stock is going. Obviously in our case, I was betting on stocks that I think were gonna go up. So I was buying just about everything I bought were calls. Now, once you decide that you want this call, the brokerage will have different times tables that these calls will be expiring and then different strike prices. And the further out expiration date you go, the more expensive they're gonna become because you have time is on your side. You have more time for it to pass that strike price. So if you get something, there goes my phone. If you get something that's expiring in two days, it's gonna be much cheaper than something expiring in two months because in two days, you're betting that stock's gonna move in a certain direction and that's, that's a lot more risk but they can produce very high rewards. And now what that call does that you just bought, it gives you the right to purchase 100 shares, one contract is 100 shares at a certain strike price. So if it goes, if the price per share on your call goes way, 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 way above the strike price, you're in business. You now have the ability to buy those shares at that strike price which is hopefully way under what the current price is and now you make that money. Now, of course, you pay that premium, that price for the call, so you have to factor that into your cost. You know, it, it's not just, oh, it goes to the strike price and I win. You know, you paid that premium for the call, so you have to add that in and that's what's the break-even point. It calculates what you paid for the call into what the strike price is and what you need to make to at least break even. And what's nice about uh, the trading platforms that we use, Webull, it makes it very easy. They lay it out there and then every day, as it approaches the expiration date, it'll update with what it's worth in real time. If the price goes down, obviously your call is gonna go down. If it continues to go up, that's when the percentages start to rack up. And what's cool is you can sell your call at any time in US markets. You can take it all the way to expiration and execute that option and purchase those 100 shares if you got one contract and go through with the deal. Uh, I'll show you just in a second. Uh, Workhorse, we, I, had, I had four contracts on a call at 1850 and I ended up letting that execute. And I bought, it was $7,400 in <laughs> workhorse stock. So I just, I, I you know woke up the next morning after it executed, whatever, on Monday, and they were there. And I'm like, okay, holy smokes. And from there, you can go ahead and sell them and lock in your profits. Or once again, if you think it's gonna go up, you can almost like double dip, make make money on the option. And then when it goes up even higher, then you're looking you're looking really good. And that's what had ended up happening here. So I hope I hope some of that made sense. Like I said, go go watch a bunch of YouTube videos. This isn't something you learn in, in five minutes. You know, you gotta really absorb it and you got to uh, practice it. And that's why paper trading is so important. If you're new to it, you know, don't put your real money on the line. Uh, get a brokerage that allows paper trading so that you can kind of experiment with fake money and learn the ropes a little bit. But I'm gonna show you the ropes a little bit. I'm gonna show you the back end of Weeble and uh, show you guys how you can do it. Let's pull up some numbers. Let me show you exactly how this works. The biggest winners in our options portfolio has definitely been Workhorse. Now, as you can see in the title, I, I listed quite a few EV stocks there. We have positions in so many of them. I'll just rattle some off. But my theory was, with the success of Tesla, all this crazy hype going around that stock, and like I've said countless times before, so many of these stocks, or back in the day with cryptocurrencies, they ride off hype so heavily. Every 18 year old with a, with a Robin Hood account wanting to buy a share, you know, especially after the split, I wanna share, I wanna share, everybody wants to share. Many would say it was overpriced, and I'm sure it was, but with the hype, it doesn't matter. Like, so many people coming in, it doesn't matter if it's overpriced in some of these kids' minds. They just want the almighty Elon Musk stock. Like, so I thought, okay, with Tesla going absolutely bananas, how about we look at some alternatives to Tesla? It's not like Tesla's the only EV player on the block, there are so many. Here we go, we're gonna start to rattle them off. And not, I'm not saying that they're direct competition with Tesla, some of them aren't, but they are in the EV space and anything EV is very, very hot right now. So the big winners, like I said, Workhorse. That company is an exciting one to watch because if you didn't know already, they are bidding at the contract, the $6 billion contract for the USPS postal truck overhaul. You, you guys know all the postal trucks running around. They're from like the 70s and 80s and 90s and they sound horrible, they look horrible. I, you know, the statistics of the cost to keep them operating and how often they break down is staggering. So no wonder USPS wants to completely overhaul the fleet, get rid of them and replace it with something new. So we have multiple companies, I think it's down to three now, bidding for this spot. 
and you know showing what they can offer and of course workhorse is here with their 100 electric delivery truck which is a very very promising technology moving forward if you think about it the past usps trucks were in service what we're talking 20 30 years or more so they're going to be around for a long time whoever gets this contract so think 20 or 30 years forward almost everything is going to be electric so are you going to tell me the u.s government is going to have their postal service still running you know for transit vans i think it's a little unlikely my guess is my personal opinion with workhorse is that they may not score a hundred percent of this contract i think that's that's a lot if they score a hundred percent you this stock is going to go skyrocket what's more likely is maybe a percentage of the contract what I could see is USPS saying, okay, we want electric vehicles for some urban areas that have uh, you know, very short routes and the battery range wouldn't be that much of a concern. And then for the longer routes, rural uh, locations, we're gonna use uh, gas powered vehicles or maybe hybrids for those routes because they are very far in between uh, stops. You know, think about Montana. I'm, I'm going to Montana tomorrow and those routes in Montana, my goodness, my aunt, her closest neighbor is like 40 miles away. So, I mean, how are you gonna have an electric delivery uh, USPS van that needs to go 20 miles in between houses in the middle of nowhere, Montana? It's just not gonna happen. So that's what I kind of see. I see them winning a percentage of it and it's a good look for the US you know, government. Uh, you can't be, I, I just can't imagine them awarding 100% of the contract to some gas burning, you know, internal combustion engine vehicle delivery van. I can't see that happening. In today's day and age, everybody's a tree hugger. We got to save the environment. Some percentage is going to go toward EVs. Like, I feel like that's a given. Just my opinion. Nothing may happen. If they get no percentage of the contract, that's definitely going to hurt the stock. It's not going to go to zero, I don't think. Workhorse still has a lot of exciting things going on in other departments, other companies they're working with. It's just that this USPS contract is the biggest one on the table. That contract will be announced, I think they said, before the end of the year. So something is brewing. And again, I could talk about this stuff forever. I've looked into these so heavily, and that's what I urge you guys to do. Don't take my word for anything. Go do your own research. But it's exciting to see how Workhorse is hiring 200 new employees, and they just closed a deal with Hitachi who will help them with their manufacturing and supply chain production processes. So I don't know, I don't know. People are saying, look, they just did a deal with Hitachi. They're trying to build up their uh, production and they're, they're hiring 200 new people. Like, does this mean that they think they're getting some percentage of the contract? Do they know something that they're not putting out there yet? Is something brewing? And honestly, I think so. You know, that those are two great signs of like something's in the works and they are going full steam ahead and it's good to see. And that's surely helped the stock big time. So I got into, I think it was last week when I started buying workhorse options and my best one percentage wise was one that expires on Friday, September 11th. That was a $19 call and I bought that. That was a very short out expiration. I think I bought that, you know, with one to two weeks before expiration versus some of these I have months on them, but this one was much cheaper because it was closer. Remember what I was saying? So that one, I got each uh, contract for $165.66 and I actually sold one of them already. I had one uh, up there as a limit price just in case the stock went high enough where it would execute on the limit price. Sure enough, it did, and it executed at a very, very high number. I sold it for $495, that option. That I paid $165 for. $495 divided by 165. Three. Exactly three. So I tripled my money. I guess that's a 200% return. That's a fantastic for one of my first EV options. That was that was a great win. You know, nothing crazy money wise, you know, whatever that was, 300 and something dollar gain, but 200% in like four or five trading days, that was a big win. But I have ones expiring in January all the way out there, like just in case, you know, I need that time. You know, who knows what they have coming up. That basically gives me the time insurance just in case the, the news of the contract takes until like December 31st, if they really drag it out and they announce then that, hey, we got some percentage of the contract. That'll really move the stock toward the end of the year going into early January. So I have that one out there just in case as a way out there, just insurance policy for my other ones. And then I have ones expiring next week and the week after that and they're all up you know way 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 uh, many over a hundred percent and uh, they're looking really really good so that's workhorse and i know a lot of you guys were asking well how do you buy these options where do you get them well i have my weeble pulled up right here so Link down below if you guys are interested in signing up for Weeble. I have an invite code that gets you two free, uh, 
it, it changes between two free stocks and now I think it's like one stock and like part of their like gold membership for three months or something like that. Just hit the link down below. It'll give you the best deal no matter what, even if you're viewing this video months down the line. Uh, be sure to check it out. It's a really good platform. I access it right from my phone. It's nice because like my TD Ameritrade, I gotta go on like my computer and it's not as user friendly as Webull and Robinhood. Robinhood's good too. Like I said, we're doing some options over there. But Webull definitely has the best sign up bonuses. So definitely hit that link down below. It helps me get some free stocks. It helps you get some free stocks and it would be much appreciated. So pulling up the Webull here real quick, uh, I guess next up would be NEO. Now we haven't made a lot of money on NEO at all. In fact, most of our options are down 20 or 30% but I still think something's gonna happen there. It's a very exciting company. It's a, it's a little bit different because they're actually over there in good old China. China. And I know some people don't like that, but they have a lot of good things going for them. They got a lot of funding, a lot of money being thrown around, and they have great technology. They already have their cars in production. They've got a cool battery swap subscription model for, for well, that you wouldn't even have to charge. You just swap your battery for a new fully charged battery. And I'm sure some sort of good news is brewing. All it takes is for them to announce some partnership or some early production you know models coming to the US or just any sort of good news in the EV world right now is sending stocks like through the roof so it's been kind of stagnant here and coming down a little bit you know so I think it presents a pretty good buying opportunity we've doubled down or tripled down now we've got many thousands of dollars of NEO options call me crazy once again call me crazy go ahead comment down below your thoughts on these positions but we do have some NEO and we're kind of diversifying in the EV game a little bit. I know we're not diversifying across industries. We're still very heavily leveraged in the EV space. So many of these stocks are SPACs, so they are doing reverse mergers to get onto the stock exchanges. It's pretty much what Nikola did to get listed much quicker. You you save some steps. It's way easier and quicker is what I've you know read. So that's why a lot of companies are following suit and doing these reverse mergers. And if they do what Nikola did, they're shooting up the stock price. Speaking of Nikola, a good one to look at and everyone has been talking about it is good old Hylion with the ticker pre-merger of SHLL. And that one has been going, I mean, just look at the graph, absolutely nuts lately. We have a few options set for, I think one's expiring next month and then a couple are uh, way, a few more months down the line. So myself and many other YouTubers are very bullish on this stock. It's currently at $51.23, which it's, I think it was touching there at 60 bucks. Uh, not too long ago. So it's come down just a little bit and a lot of people are saying it could easily be 60, 70, 80, hundred dollars or more if this merger goes nicely and they get listed as highly on and everything goes forward like they're planning at the end of this month September 28th I think is when they're having the meeting to finalize this merger it's it's most likely going to send the stock up pretty good look at what Nikola did and now Nikola's what they were just a 15 billion dollar market cap but they just shot up with the GM deal to nearly double that and they've come down a little bit so whatever they are 20 billion dollars for their fully hydrogen electric semis and what Hylion is doing is a little bit different right now in their early stages they're going to be retrofitting semi trucks with their hybrid axles and slowly integrating into like some being powered by natural gas even as well it's some really exciting technology the ceo uh looks like a very very smart guy i've watched some interviews and they're currently valued at market cap of around 1.5 billion dollars so if you look at nicola geez when they when they did their merger i mean they went as high as uh, I think 30 or 40 billion dollar market cap. Now they're whatever, like I said, 20 billion. And uh, Hylion's here, 1.5 billion dollars. You start to look, well, geez, you know, this is only a tenth of what uh, Nikola is. And I'm not saying they're the same company and they should be worth the same, but I think there's a lot of room at a $1.5 billion market cap to go up from there. And guys, it's important to look at market caps, just like cryptocurrencies. We always said, look at the market cap, not the share price. That has nothing to do with it. So they're currently $1.5 billion. I think they can go up from there. And that's why people are saying, you know, hey, if they go to a $3 billion market cap and they double, your share prices now go to a hundred bucks. And if you have options in them, that's killer. Uh, so our options are at $50 call, $60 call, and uh, I think we'll do okay on them. They're, they're basically, they're just slightly down from what we paid for them. One of them is slightly up, but they're just chilling. I think they're gonna go up from there. That's highly on. We talked about Neo, uh, Workhorse, Tesla. Oh geez, man, this video just keeps getting longer. I'm really sorry, I'll speed it up and I'll just post more videos. Comment down below if you want more, more videos. This just happened last night. So when Tesla got hammered down 22%, I looked at that and I'm like, my goodness, I have never seen a drop so hard in one day. And sure enough, it was the biggest drop in the company's history in one single day. Poor Tesla, they got nailed. 
I decided to make a very, very, very risky decision. Everyone is fearful. Everyone's like, oh my God, I, get a, I gotta get out of this thing before it goes to zero. I think beginning investors or retail investors can get spooked very easily. So they probably saw these huge drops uh, you know, and, and some bad press about Tesla not making the S&P 500 and people taking profits, big people selling off and they're like, oh my gosh, I gotta sell off too. So that just absolutely tanked the stock. So I saw 22% down five minutes before the market closed yesterday. And I'm like, oh, that, that's gonna make options really, really cheap. Do I think it's gonna go up from here? I'm like, oh, probably, I mean, $330 per share. That's, that's, that's pretty cheap in my mind for Tesla. And with battery day coming up and just people realizing that, hey, went down 22%, here's a good time to buy back in. I think it's gonna go up, that's what I said. So one or two minutes before market closed yesterday, I bought a Tesla option, Tesla call. It was $3,825. It's a $330 call. That was a big risk and that was like one of the cheapest Tesla options you can buy. They're very expensive right now because it's a very expensive stock per share. So to play in Tesla options, it's not cheap. It's gonna cost you a lot no matter what. So I, I bit the bullet. I bought a contract for $3,825. After hours, it already starts to like trickle up or tr just barely. It's showing little bits of signs. Pre-market this morning, it was up like 5%. Sure enough, market opens. It goes pretty crazy today. It, it finished up today nearly up 11% and then after hours, it's up nearly another $9. So that makes my call option worth quite a bit of money. So just at market close, it was plus 1661 profit on my $3,800 investment. Now that's up $9 after market. If it goes into tomorrow morning with good momentum and it's up again, you better bet, I mean, we're gonna be nearing $2,000 profit in two business days, two trading days on one simple option. So it goes to show the power of that. Whereas if I spent $4,000, $3,825, just on generic Tesla stock, it would be up well, 13% right now. So I would have made whatever that is, $400. But since I have an option, higher risk, higher reward, instead of $400 profit, this is now up you know, nearly $2,000. So a lot higher chance for bigger returns, but a lot more risk. And if it doesn't hit the strike price by the expiration date, guess what? You get $0. Whereas if it were to go down 5%, you would lose 5% on your long-term investment and no big deal, you lose 5%. But if it's 5% under the strike price at expiration, you lose everything. So that is the risk involved with options. That's why you have to be very careful. Okay, so we covered Tesla, Workhorse, Neo, Hylion. Again, I'll cover these in hopefully individual videos. Let me know if you guys wanna see that. That's about uh, all the options. We, we just bought a little option on um, Candy Tech, uh, CNDI, they're an EV company, and then we have uh, some of the EVs don't uh, don't trade options. They just just have standard shares that you can buy and sell. So in that department, we have DPHC Diamond Peak Holding. That's the Lordstown. They're going to do again a reverse merger. So that's going to be exciting to watch. That that let's see our position there. That one's already up 21%. HCHC, another one to watch, 3.4% up. I mean, not really anything huge on these because they don't have options. I wasn't too interested in them, but I just threw a little money in each just to watch. Point is, I'm watching a lot of these SPACs. It's like the new hot thing and everybody wants to get into them before they merge and then they got the new ticker symbol and then it goes up from there and people go crazy and then you cover your profits. You get out and you watch it all go back down. Like, I don't know. People are probably pumping these so hard. It's uh, creating just an insane opportunity to make money if you know what you're doing. So we're looking good so far. I'll keep you guys updated on how these are looking. Follow the Instagram if you want to see them live. I try to post there every day on the story when something's going on. So if you want to stay up to date, follow us there and I'll keep you guys posted. I appreciate so many of you guys reaching out to me on Instagram, you know, swiping up on the story saying, hi, how can I trade options? How can I get involved in the stock market or what platform are you using or can you explain this more in depth on video so i said yes video coming soon and here you guys have it this very long video this went way over what i wanted it to but there was a lot to talk about and i don't just want to like throw out tickers out there and be like i'm, in, I'm invested in this one that's that like i want to explain them a little bit so there's some of my logic behind what's going down my favorites some of the ones in my watch list that's just the ev side of things 
we've been making really good money trading commodity stocks, the gold and silver stocks, because that's what we do on the daily with the numismatic industry, dealing with old coins and currency. We know silver and gold markets really, really well. So when we see something in the real world, not matching up with what we see in the stock world or in the ETFs of this paper, you know, online silver, then we know there's some discrepancy and something's gonna, some movement's gonna go down. So we've been making money buying commodity ETFs, silver ETFs extremely risky that's a whole nother a whole nother level of risk so comment down below your guys' thoughts i'd love to hear your thoughts on those stocks so i'm sure a lot of you guys watching this are uh, already holding some of these uh, companies so let me know in the comment section down below what you are holding and like i said in the beginning feel free to hit those links down below to sign up for webull and get your one or two free stocks or you can sign up for our robin hood but like i said webull you get the best sign up bonus quick note you don't automatically get enrolled in options trading when you make an account you can't just like go sign up for webull and tomorrow start trading options you can't do that you have to have a minimum balance i think on webull it's like a thousand dollars to trade options and then you have to kind of pass their little test basically you just have they're gonna ask you some questions like what's your level of financial experience? What's your you know, income? How, how risky are you willing to be? And if you're trading options, you better put that your, your goal is uh, you know, growth and that you have a high risk tolerancy because if you put you're super conservative, they're not gonna approve you for options because that's the opposite. They are not very conservative. They are very risky. Uh, so you just wanna be aware of that going into it. There's YouTube videos talking about it. So check it out. Hit those links down below. Help, help me out and I'll help you out um, with their invite bonus. So thank you guys for watching. I know that went very long. Comment down below video suggestions. Stay tuned. You guys rock. Take care. Have a great day. Thank <laughs> you.